Let me show you how to properly check and then set the automatic transmission fluid level in your Aston Martin DB9. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to properly check and then set the automatic transmission fluid level in a Touchtronics 2 six-speed automatic that was fitted to most DB9s from 2004 to 2014. Aston Martin considered this a filled-for-life transmission, which personally I think is absurd. Uh, no fluid is, uh, that's oil-based is really going to last forever. Uh, I reached out and I contacted ZF. Now they're the company in Germany that makes the transmission for Aston Martin and their specs clearly say that fluid is good for 50 to 70,000 miles or eight years maximum. Well my DB9 is 15 years old and has 45,000 miles on it and this is what the transmission fluid came out looking like. This is what it looks like new. So clearly it's due for a change and uh, I wanted to undertake that. You may also just need to check the fluid level if you've had a leak or something in your system. Maybe the transmission cooler lines leaked or there was some sump plug leak or something that, you know, where you think a little bit of the fluids come out. Well, you might want to go through this process just to make sure it's topped up properly. Now, Aston, since they thought the transmission was sealed for life, made no effort to make servicing this thing easy. The fill plug is just in a completely buried and hidden location. So we're going to have to do a little work to get to it. It's not particularly hard and it's well within the skills of anybody that has a basic set of tools. You'll need about two hours to go through the process, including the fluid checking, setting, as well as the prerequisite steps getting it up on jack stands and things. So get your dirty clothes on and let's get started. Parts wise, you should probably have automatic transmission fluid uh, on hand. So uh, you're going to see me using the ZF Lifeguard 6 fluid. This is essentially the uh, fluid from the manufacturer. Um, now you may need just to have a liter on hand if you're just sort of topping up your level if you haven't done any work or had a leak in your transmission. Or if you've just done a major service in your transmission you may need 10 or 12 liters of this. So just make sure you've got enough fluid on hand. One thing though about your fluid choice is you need to make sure you're putting the same type of fluid in that's in it currently. So if you're just changing your transmission fluid completely like I am, you have free choice. You can use the ZF fluid, you could use the Aston fluid, you could switch to the Ford Mercon, whatever you want. But if you're just topping up your fluid level, you need to make sure you're using the same fluid that's existing. So if your car is original and you've never had the fluid changed, uh, I think you're going to need to either use the, you should probably use the ZF or the Aston Martin, which is really just rebranded ZF. Um, you need to have shop clothes. Uh, you are going to get splattered with fluid. Your arms are going to have fluid running down them potentially. Uh, it's just going to be a messy job. So have some grubby jeans, uh, grubby t-shirt, uh, so that uh, you're not worrying about your clothes when you're getting the work done. Other than that, we just need to get our tools together and you need to convince your sweetie to come out and help you in the garage. And I'll show you why in a minute. You're going to need a few basic tools, so let's check them out. Um, you're going to need a half inch torque wrench because we have to retorque the subframe cross member uh, at the end. Uh, to get the cross member off, you're going to need a 16 millimeter uh, hex. Uh, so I've got an extension, a hex, and I've even got a 16 millimeter six point for my electric tool. Uh, so basically you've got to take out four of those bolts. You're going to need a 10 millimeter box end wrench um, to take off a heat shield. Uh, this one is particularly excellent because it's got the bendy head and it ratchets. It's a very tight uh, location. So if you happen to have one of these, it's perfect. If you just have a regular combination wrench, uh, you'll be able to do it, it'll just take you a while. Um, you're going to need an 8 millimeter hex uh, wrench, but you need it to be stubby. So I found that my standard 8 millimeter wrench was too long, and uh, you're going to need one that's much shorter. You can either take one that you've got and cut it down, 
Um, or you could uh, get a hold of one of these little stubby um, eight millimeter sockets that goes on a quarter inch dr drive. And together those make a much narrower thing. These have to fit into a tight space. Uh, you're gonna need an expect your inspection light's absolutely gonna be handy. Uh, you're gonna need to be able to mop up a mess. So I've got a copious supply of shop rags and I have some of this pig mat. And pig mat is super good at mopping, at soaking up puddles. It's not realistic that you're not gonna make a mess. So you definitely either wanna have some pig mat or a big roll of paper towels around. Uh, while you're setting uh, the fluid level, you're gonna have your hand up by a hot exhaust pipe. So it might be good to have a, um, a shop glove, a leather glove or something that you can, in case the back of it brushes up against the exhaust pipe, it won't melt onto your hand either. So that might help you out. Uh, you're gonna need a drip bucket because you're gonna be pulling a drain plug and letting fluid dribble out. So you need some sort of pan or bucket to catch the fluid in. And I have this uh, really nifty, uh, basically it's a big dog kennel liner. It's plastic and it's just perfect because uh, if you're getting splashing and other stuff around, uh, you can catch that so you can lay this on the ground underneath the transmission while you're doing the work. In the shop, you're gonna see me actually using my uh, oil drain uh, system, but uh, that'd be the perfect thing for doing on your garage floor. You're gonna have to refill the fluid. So whatever system you've decided on for doing the fluid fill, um, I actually have a transmission fluid pump. There'll be a link to it, uh, what this is in the R. Uh, companion article but basically I can stick this up in the fill hole and pump this handle and it'll pump the fluid up out of here you could use squeeze bottles and hoses you can use the little hand pump system uh, but uh, for me this is a lot of fluid I'm gonna have to move so uh, I bought the special tool if you're just checking your level I would just get the little hand pump system and not spend 80 bucks on one of these um, another really important tool is this this is a Foxwell NT510 OBD2 code reader. And this particular one has the Aston Martin codes uh, in it. We're going to need to talk to the computer in the transmission to know the transmission fluid temperature in real time. Um, I have a whole nother video on how to use this for that. Um, so check that out, there'll be a link up here. But uh, you definitely are gonna need an ODB2 uh, that can talk to the transmission control module, and that's not a standard OBD2 reader. It needs to have some special capabilities. So, um, got all the tools together. Let's get on with the process of uh, checking the fluid level. So you've got a few prerequisites to get done first before we can start checking the fluid level. Um, you need to get the car up on jack stands as high as you possibly can, because you're going to be laying under the car pumping fluid, checking levels, sliding in, sliding out. Um, so get your jack stands up on their maximum height. Um, the other thing you need to be sure is the car is absolutely level. Um, so on your garage level concrete floor, because if the floor is out of level significantly, it'll skew the fluid level uh, when you're checking it. So you want the car completely level on the jack stands and uh, up safely. You also need to watch my other video on how to remove the, the rear under tray because the whole transmission is hidden underneath the rear under tray. So you get that out of the way and then we're ready to actually start the work. Um, so let's go ahead and get the rear subframe cross member off and then take off one of the heat shields on the exhaust pipe so we can get to the fill plug. So the first step is we need to remove this frame uh, cross member. It's a 16 millimeter. Now, mine are pretty rusty, even though I'm in California, so I can imagine these are in pretty rough shape all over the world. I hit them with a little uh, uh, WD-40 uh, to break them loose. Uh, and I'm using a six-point half-inch drive socket so that I don't round them off. And then break them loose. Then I'm gonna switch over just to use. There we go. So there's the cross member removed. 
And now we have access to the bottom of the, uh, the oil pan. So let's take a look at getting this heat shield off next. The next step's a bit tricky. We're gonna try to take this heat shield off. It's held on with two 10 millimeter bolts. One's not too bad to get to. The other one's kind of a blind feel. So I have a 10 millimeter box end and a 10 millimeter ratcheting box end with flexi bend. This might be the ticket. So this rearward one is pretty much a blind deal. Um, you have to reach your arm in from over here on the opposite side of the suspension and feel your way onto the head of the bolt. There we go. Now I'm going to try to get my hand in. <laughs> Somehow I have to hold the, the head of the, the wrench on the head and it's going. It's not very tight. It's actually finger loose. Well, thank for that. It wasn't rusted in there. And there's our first heat shield bolt. And the second one is a little bit easier, I think. It can be had from this angle. And there, I think it's finger loose. If I can only get my finger to it. So I'm hoping with this bolt removed, I'll be able to wrangle the shield out of there. There we go. Just like the other one. And there we go. One heat shield. And I like to keep the bolts with the part. So with the heat shield out of the way, we now can finally see our uh, fill plug. And that's this sort of one inch, sort of wide uh, plug here. And it has an eight millimeter uh, hex uh, opening in it. But this is where you can see where you need the stubby um, hex wrench. So I'm gonna try and get this in here and stay off camera while I'm doing it. There we go. So, and then <clears throat> you may uh, struggle to get it off again, depending on the wrench you're using, but essentially once you get it cracked loose, uh, I found mine's pretty close to finger tight. So if I took this little stubby socket off now, I can use it as a handle to uh, loosen and tighten the plug a little bit, and then I'll use the wrench at the end. So if you've got a, uh, a, a shorter regular hex key, that's great. Um, but now that uh, I've got the plug loose, uh, I wanna leave it in until I've got the next step in the engine running. So let's head up to the car. So now that we're getting ready to start the engine, uh, just make sure you've got all your tools and your fluid ready to go underneath the car. I've got, got your drain catch pan or whatever you're gonna to use to catch the dribbling fluid. Uh, you've got your transmission fluid either with your, in your pump system or in the bottles with the little hand pump ready to go. Um, you've got your uh, gl work glove because you're gonna potentially be right up beside the, hot, the warming up exhaust pipe. So you wanna have something to protect your hand. Um, and probably you have a couple rags, you know, ready to go. So, um, just have all your stuff laid out under the car before you go up and fire it up. So here we are inside the car. How come? Well, we actually have to check the transmission fluid with the engine running. So uh, we're basically gonna start the car and then we're gonna crawl back under the car and check the fluid level. So first thing we should probably talk about is safety. Uh, there is no point in this process that the rear wheel should be turning. We actually want to set the park brake and leave it set for the whole procedure. When we're actually putting the car through its gears, you want your helper stamping on the brake and absolutely making sure those rear wheels don't turn. They shouldn't, uh, but uh, uh, we just want to basically point out that we do not want any moving equipment when we're crawling underneath the car. Another safety tip is you're going to be laying on the floor in your garage 
with the exhaust coming out of the exhaust pipe. And in a closed garage, carbon monoxide settles on the ground and will kill you. So it doesn't matter what the weather conditions are, absolutely be doing this in a well-ventilated garage. Garage door fully open. If you have a fan, put it blowing underneath the car. You just wanna make sure you don't kill yourself with the fumes. So let me take a minute to explain the fill process to you. There's basically two tracks we're gonna follow. If you've just completely emptied all the fluid out of your transmission, then you're gonna to have to do a first step, which is a bulk refilling of the fluid. Um, if you're just gonna check your fluid, because it's been fine and you just wanna to top it up, um, you can skip forward a little bit in the video to when we're at the fluid checking section. So I'm gonna start by going over what we need to do to do the bulk refill. After a full transmission uh, drain and service, essentially we've only managed to get about three liters of fluid back into the transmission sump, even though we took 10 out. So we need to actually get those other almost seven liters back into the system before we can do the final finessing level set. Um, that process is pretty straightforward. We're gonna get in the car, we're gonna start it up, we're gonna leave it in park, and we're gonna let the engine warm up just to where it drops from fast idle back to regular idle. So we want the engine speed to be under 1,000 RPM. We wanna make sure that our air conditioning is turned off, that our headlights are off. Basically, they suggest no load on the engine for whatever reason, I don't know. Then with the engine idling, we are gonna jump out of the car, slide underneath. We're gonna pull out the fill plug and it shouldn't be dribbling because those three liters of fluid we already put into the sump have been sucked up by uh, the pumping system already and they're off into the, you know, some of the cavities of the transmission and the sump's gonna be empty. So we wanna get under there as quickly as we can, pull out the fill plug, make sure it's not dribbling, it shouldn't be, and then start, put in our pump and start pumping like crazy. We wanna keep pumping fluid in until we get a slow dribble of fluid coming back out of the fill hole. So the whole time the engine's on idle, the transmission's moving inside, the pumps inside it are pumping and it's slurping up all that new fluid you're pumping in and moving it into all the nooks and crannies. So I've done a complete drain of my transmission. I have about seven liters to get back in. So uh, we'll see if I can get most of six or seven liters back into the transmission while, while we're doing this for real. Uh, so let's get started. So, air conditioning off, headlights off so there's no electrical load, park brake is on, and I'm going to wait for the idle to drop down to uh, below a thousand RPM. There it goes. So, time to get under the car. So right now, the exhaust pipe's just moderately warm and there should be no fluid that comes out when I pull the drain fill plug. And that's what I got. So now I can get my fill nozzle in open the valve and uh, got my drain pan underneath where the drizzle will come out and it's time to start pumping like crazy. Basically this whole bottle should fit in there. There it is. All right, so there we are. We're getting a little bit of uh, fluid coming out. We have about half a liter left in the jug. So for me, that's actually, uh, I've got nine and a half liters back in. 
and uh, so now I can take out the filled nozzle and it's time to put the fill plug back in and it's time to wear the glove. The exhaust pipe's not too hot but you wouldn't want to keep your hand nuzzled up to it for too long. And I just want to snug it up because I am going to be opening it again as I do the final level set. So that's snugged up so it's sealed off. Now you can go up and shut the car off. Now that the bulk level is set, we can go ahead and shut down the car and get ready to do the final level check and fill. So now we're down to the most important part. We're going to do the final a fluid level check and a fill if necessary just to make the level perfect and this isn't particularly complicated now that we've got the car all prepared um, it's really just a process of we have to monitor the transmission fluid temperature and we have to open the fill plug at a certain temperature let it dribble out or add fluid and we'll let it finish dribbling out before the transmission fluid reaches another temperature um, so uh, the process is going to start with hooking up your uh, OBD2 reader that can actually communicate with the transmission to uh, read the transmission cooler, the transmission fluid temperature. Um, not every OBD2 reader can do that. This one is a Foxwell NT510. It's hooked up to the body port and I've got it talking to the transmission. Um, I have a whole video on how to use this tool for this task and that'll be linked up here. So right now it says my transmission fluid temperature is 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great. Um, so the process is going to be basically we're going to start the engine sitting in the car. Um, so we're not under the car, so we're going to get the engine started. We're going to have the park brake set fully because uh, we do not want the wheels turning at any point. Uh, we have our garage door open and well ventilated because we're going to be underneath the car working on it here uh, with the engine running. So once the car is running, uh, we're going to let it drop back to idle with no load on it. So that means the air conditioning, we want to have that turned off um, because if you have your air conditioning turned on, it will keep the engine speed a little bit higher. So AC off, and I'm also turning off my automatic headlights, which can't see, but just the headlights to off. So there is no load. So let the engine warm up for a minute or two just till it drops back below 1,000 RPM and it's at idle. Once it's at idle, we're going to shift it through the gears. So we're going to uh, put it in reverse with our foot on the brake. We're going to shift, so we're going to shift into reverse, and then we're going to count to maybe it has to be at least three seconds, but I'm probably going to go for about five seconds in reverse. Then I'm going to shift it into neutral. And then I'm going to shift it into drive. And we're going to be in first gear. So I'm going to let it sit in first gear, just idling for about five seconds. Then I'm going to paddle shift to second gear, and let it idle for about five seconds. And then I'm going to paddle shift again to third gear and let it sit for about five seconds. Then we're going to put it back into park. And what that's doing is it's basically getting us back uh, fluid into all the nooks and crannies and all the galleries uh, inside the transmission because we've shifted into the gears that's actually worked the mechanisms. Um, so then we're going to get our helper to come sit in the car with it still idling. And the helper is going to basically be calling out the transmission fluid temperature. It's going to start to go up um, since we're sitting and idling. And I don't know if that's going to be visible on screen or not, uh, but the 79, it'll start to rise. So while they're in there in the car, just chilling, um, 
foot on the brake probably, watching the temperature. Uh, we're going to slip underneath the car and we're going to uh, wait for the temperature to get to 30 degrees Celsius. Once the temperature has reached 30 degrees Celsius, we're going to open the fill plug. And depending on what happens next, so if we pull the fill plug out and fluid starts drooling out, we're just going to wait. If we open the fill plug at 30 degrees and nothing comes out, we're going to add fluid, we're going to grab our pump, and we're going to pump in some more fluid until a stream of fluid starts dribbling out. So, yeah, when we pull the fill plug at 30 degrees, if there's no fluid dribbling out, the fluid level is low. Uh, so once we filled it up till there's fluid dribbling out, or if it already started dribbling out, then we're going to wait. Uh, so basically we're going to let the temperature climb up past 35 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. Once we reach 40 degrees Celsius, uh, we're waiting for the fluid stream to stop, slow down to a drip. Not a stream anymore, not a dribble. We want a drip, drip, drip. Once we've reached the drip, drip, drip level, we have to just put the drain plug back in and we're done. Stop the car and we'll tighten up the drain plug. Um, we cannot let the temperature get to 50 degrees Celsius. So if it was so over full that it didn't dribble out finish dribbling out in time by the time the temperature got to 50 degrees we've missed the window so we're going to put the drain plug back in uh, turn the car off let it cool all the way off again down to 30 and we're going to repeat the process but hopefully I haven't overfilled it and uh, we'll be able to get it done near to 40 degrees all right let's do the uh, final uh, level check and fill so let's get the uh, I've got the temperature gauge reading it still says it's 79 Let's get the engine started. So now I'm waiting for it to drop back to idle. All right, so now we're back to a, a, a warm idle. Um, it's time to shift through the gears. So I'm gonna shift into reverse and hold for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi into neutral and then into drive so I should be in first gear one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi four Mississippi five Mississippi shift up into second one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi four Mississippi five Mississippi shift up into third one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Back into park. All right, transmission fluid temperature is currently at 82. And actually now it says 84. So we're just about to 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86. So now I'm gonna hop out and get my helper uh, to jump in. And we're gonna move underneath the car. You can just move the unit to wherever you can see it. What's it at now? All right, so my helper just told me the temperature is at 88 degrees. That's 31 degrees Celsius. That means I'm a go to open the fill plug. And what we're looking for here now is to see if there's actually a, a stream coming out or not. And if there isn't a stream, I'm going to start adding fluid. There is no stream, so I'm low. So I'm going to top it up until there's a stream coming out. We're at 90. And there's our stream starting to come out. So that took about a quarter of a liter to top up. So now all I need to do is wait 40 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature we want to make sure we at least let it rise to, is about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, we've got at least 10, <clears throat> 10 more degrees to go. And uh, in the meantime, it's dripping out slowly and uh, the level is basically setting itself. <laughs> 
95. All right, we've reached uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're at a drip, 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 drip pace. Uh, it's really, not, you know, uh, probably you could wait for it to, the dripping to slow down even fractionally more, but I don't really think it's necessary. All the ZF manual says is wait for it to slow to a drip. So time to put the plug back in. Now this exhaust pipe is warm. Uh, so I've got my glove on. And What's the temperature? Thank you, you can shut the car off. All right, so uh, it was still at 40 degrees when I finished putting the plug in. Uh, it just has to not be more than 50. Now Aston, uh, well actually ZF, has a torque spec for this fill plug of 35 Newton meters. Uh, I don't think we can get a torque wrench uh, head in here. I've got my quarter inch uh, torque wrench here and I can get it in. And I have it set to its maximum, which is t about 23 Newton meters. And that's gonna be good enough for me. So um, uh, if you can't get a torque wrench in, just make it as snug as you can make it without doing anything that'll wreck up the, uh, the hex threads. So let's see if I can get this set. All right. So that's torqued. And I can take out my piece of wood that was helping with a little extra space. So at this point, uh, take the time to get into all the nooks and crannies where the drip fluid was dripping from. Because what I found uh, with, is that if, uh, once fluids got on these lips, I'll actually see it drip off here hours later because it's basically running along in the crevice between the two pieces, the plastic and the steel. So if you get a drip, this happens to be the lowest bolt at the back of the pan. Um, so it just drips off there. So uh, take your time, uh, do your absolute best to try and mop it up, but essentially it's it's gotten into all these little cr cracks, you know, this little gap between the two things. So uh, it's going to weep along and you're probably going to see it come out in a place or two. So uh, just wipe it all down. Um, it's also a good time probably just to, s now that it's been running to inspect all the places it could leak. So check the uh, flare fittings um, on the thermostatic coupler if you had that off. You can look at all the bolts all the way around the pan if you've also replaced the pan. But here's your big opportunity, you know, just to make sure it's sealed up tight um, before you put the last parts together. So I've actually uh, let my car cool down substantially. This exhaust pipe's hot and uh, we have to get up there and put the heat shield back on. So go for dinner, wait overnight, go for a long lunch, take your sweetie out for um, a lunch for helping you set the level, but come back and. I'm also doing did one last careful inspection of all the bolts and nuts to make sure I had no drips um, and we're all good to go. So um, I'm confident I'm uh, ready to basically cover it all back up again. So the next step is to restore the uh, heat sheet, exhaust heat shield that we took off. It's held on with two 10 millimeter bolts and uh, it should just sort of slip up in here and rotate back into place and then i've got one of the 10 millimeters and i'm going to get the rearmost one in first because i can get my arm up and over and then i'm going to slip the bolt through the hole and then i'm going to find its way to the bolt hole and try and get it going by hand there we go I'm not really going to tighten that up too much because the harder one's actually going to be 
to get this uh, forward one in because you, <laughs> you can sort of almost get to the hole a couple of different ways, but um, there's no really good access. So I'm going to take the bolt in my hand. I'm going to basically squish the washer to the head and scooch it along. And my whole goal here is just to drop it through the uh, as a starting point. There we go. And now I can actually see it through the shield. I'm just by braille more or less in my fingertips uh, trying to get the thread started. It shouldn't be too hard. There we go. You can always hit him with a little bit of uh, WD-40 or something before you get started so that they spin nice and easy. So now I'm going to get rid of all the slack in them while well, it's with my hand because that's going to be a lot easier than when I have to do it with the wrench. All right, so now I have my magic bendy wrench here again. Now these have a torque spec. I believe it's eight or 10 Newton meters, but I'm just going to aim for a snug. And that's snug. And then this one, you, with the bend, you have a little bit better access. Just get my finger on the top keep the wrench on. And snug. All right, so heat shield back in place. Let's get the uh, subframe cross member on next. Next up, we need to get the uh, rear cross member reinstalled. Uh, not too hard, other than these bolts need to be torqued up pretty well. And there's just four of them. And I'm going to use my helper tool here. <clears throat> so these torque to 85 Newton meters. There's no pattern to it, so. And it's a 16 millimeter hex. All right, so cross member installed. Uh, the next thing we need to do is put back the uh, rear under tray and uh, up here you'll see a link to uh, my other video where I show you how to do that. Well, that was a bit messy and a little bit involved, but if you just follow along and take it one step at a time, I think anyone can undertake that. Now you've got peace of mind that you've got your transmission fluid level set perfectly. If you're watching this video because you've just done your major transmission service where you drained the nine and a half liters of fluid out, you probably saw I got an entire nine and a half liters, maybe even a little bit more back in. So I'm really chuffed with that. So um, that's good news. Up here, you'll probably see my uh, a video on maybe the full transmission service or something else relating to the transmission. Down here will be the companion blog article for this video. And I'll have links to the ZF diagrams and the torque settings and all those things, uh, parts that you might need, the fluids. So please check out that article. If you like these types of videos, please go ahead and subscribe down here. And as always, um, I love to hear from you. Please leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching. One little bit of bonus content, if you're still with us. Um, this was the last video, the last part of the shoot for probably six days, a um, couple of full weekends of uh, shooting to get this whole transmission series completed. I'm a mess, but I, you know, we just spread it out over multiple days to make it easier. And here is my noble cameraman, Rob, uh, who has volunteered his time for six days to sit and watch me twirl spanners on my car. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was kind of good to get it done because everybody's been asking for it. So get out there in your garage and get your own transmission fluid changed. 
Talk to you next time.